times too, but it stopped working last week and I had to take oh. the cord off. So, but YouTube oh. still works, so we'll take it. We'll okay. Take it. So, okay, we're gonna share you with the world. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I was so excited for your live this week. I just, because I love your book so much. And I'm so grateful that Jess told me about your books. I just... I'm grateful that she connected us. Yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you absolutely. for having me. And I'm sorry I had to boot my oh, pre-order by a month. totally but... fine. Totally fine. We're good. Mm -hmm. Hey, Amazon, welcome back. Today we have Julia Kent. And I'm so excited to show you her new books. And she has a new one coming out. Hey, Girl Who Paints. And I am just so excited to introduce you to Julia Kent. I fell in love with her series, and you will too. There are three of this series out now, right? Yes. Three yes. and one coming. So good news. You can catch up and read all three and get ready for four because um, I was a little sad when you pushed your pre-order back because I was like, I, I need it. I, I wanted to bet you for like an arc. I'm like, you know, proofreading's overrated. Yeah. Just send it over to my Kindle and we'll be happy. <laughs> you are absolutely on the list, Erin. Oh, well, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I know, first of all, we have a big congratulations in order. She is going to be celebrating her 10 years in her writing career in December. 10 years, you guys. And that is just amazing. So tell us how you got started writing. And sure. reading, and where did this all stem from? All right. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it, and I, I love your show. And so it's I'm kind of geeked out to be included. <laughs> um, so I'm Julia Kent. I'm New, a New York Times bestselling author, and I am. I'll tell you a little bit about how I got started. So I was a college history and government professor and higher education administrator for about 20 years before I got into romance writing. But I've been writing for, well, writing for pay since I was 16, which was, you know, 13 years ago, um, but a little longer than that. And so I've been writing for decades and kind of fell into romance writing through a strange series of events that can never be replicated again that had to do with being a business writer and an SEO consultant for years. And a bunch of my colleagues were talking about this funky thing called the Kindle back in 2007, 2008. And it kind of went from there. People started pulling out uh, trunked books that hadn't sold and uploading them and they were coming back and saying hey i'm making some money off of this and i thought well i like writing fiction and i had been writing a different kind of fiction more creative nonfiction, or um fiction outside of romance and so uh, because i've been a history professor i thought oh i'll write a historical romance this will be easy not and it went from there that historical romance is now trunked <clears throat> Because it turns out it's a lot harder to write books that readers really want to read. Um, and so I went back to the drawing board, tried again. And so in December of 2012, I released my first book and the rest is history pretty quickly. Everything took off. I'm so grateful to readers who enjoyed my books and was able to leave my job. And I've been doing this full time now for nine years years which it's a dream it's a dream and it's all because of readers so um and the love you series is a new world that i came up with about two years ago and it i hate to say the p word but the pandemic got me thinking about where i wanted my energies to go and where i wanted my mind to go and what i wanted to focus on and how i wanted to feel and how i wanted readers to feel and i came up with this idea of a town completely devoted to love not just in the romantic sense but in the business sense what would it be like to live in or be raised in a world where the entire town is devoted to love. And so I came up with the idea of love you Maine, where every day is Valentine's day. And it went from there. I I've had so much fun building this world because at first I came up with the idea and I thought that's, that's over the top. And then I thought, wait a minute, I write over the top romantic comedy. That's what I do. So of course I should go for over the top. 
And then when I started to really design it, because the Love You series is very different from anything I've ever done before. In the past, I would come up with an idea, write the first book, and then just sort of follow it from there. Like, oh, I guess readers liked it. I'll write a second book. Okay, now I have to come up with a third book. And it, so it was more um, organic, where this was, I have this idea. I'm going to build the world first. I'm going to populate the world. And then I'm going to decide what do I do with this character? Is he second chance romance? Is this one of um, more enemies to lovers? Those tropes came in. And so I decided that I would be more trope focused, more world focused. And it's just been a joy. It's been a joy to focus on a different kind of world for me, a different kind of writing. Still funny, still um, about putting people in hilarious and difficult situations and sort of seeing how they find their way out. I still write large communities, like worlds you want to live in. You want these people to be your best friends. Um, and it's great because I feel that way when I'm writing it. I'm like, oh, this is so much better than real life sometimes. I'm going to just go write. So that's that's sort of my the journey up to to love you at this point. I don't want to do any spoilers, but I'm just going to say I can't look at another moose the same way now. <laughs> When I tell you that, when I tell you that Julie is funny, I'm, she's hilarious. So the scene where they glue themselves together, I'm just like, this is a riot, a riot. And then the whole town and everything from the, I just, I loved it so much. Um, it, you have a great way of cinematically bringing people into your world and mm -hmm. that's a gift that not every author can do create an entire world that you can see think about I mean it, I read your books several months ago in the summer and I still think about them I still think about funny oh, little things okay. um girl who paints thanks for the follow you said I want to meet all the characters animals included right and I want to go the and there are animals galore in this series from the, the moose who romantically involves himself with a trailer. <laughs> we'll just say that the poor heroine in Love You Right is a city girl from LA and she ends up at what she thinks is an inn that her assistant has reserved for her. And it ends up being a trailer in somebody's backyard. And there's a moose that confuses the trailer with a female moose. And so she wakes up and thinks it's an earthquake because she's an LA girl, except there aren't, to my knowledge, major earthquakes in Western Maine. And it goes from there. And so, and there are, there's a cat named Calamine, there's a dog named Jester in book two, and book three has a cat named Sandwich. And so um, I love, I love adding the animal element in one of my other series, Shopping for a Billionaire. I have a grumpy cat named Chuckles. And it's just always fun because the animals themselves really are characters. Um, they absolutely are. I, Aaron, I read your book, Fall in Love, oh. and I love the puppies, the puppy scene. That was a moment. And you, I love how it was such a beautiful way to show how caring the hero was. And I think that animals allow us in our books to show sides of yeah. the humans that don't come out in any other way. Um, now, Randy the Moose is, is Randy. <laughs> clearly uh, over the top. I, mean, uh, I love the one part where you're like, his name is Randy, like his name. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the, the, so the funny thing about that is I went to my reader group on Facebook. I have a wonderful reader group. And I asked them for the name. I, I said, I have this moose and I need a name. And they picked Randy. And my husband has a cousin, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> so it got a little awkward um, naming the moose Randy, but it fits. It fits. Yes, it definitely fits. I love this series so much. So tell us what's in store. Beautiful, beautiful covers. They're just... Thank you. Oh, I, I mean, I read them in the summer in the pool. We talked about that and I joked how I turned the bottoms pink because I would sit and I would lay on a floaty and like read these books in the pool. My daughter was like, what if it falls in the pool? I'm like, it won't. It can't. <laughs> well, and I and and I love that it's pink because the official colors of Love You Maine are pink, red, and white. You are not allowed to wear or 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 have any buildings that don't meet those codes. 
Um, it's one of those small towns with a, a love committee that enforces all those rules. So you I don't think you, I can get the law enforcement uniform out of my head. <laughs> in so what Aaron's talking about in love you maine the so there is there because it's a town it's a tourist town it's a uh, um devoted to love and the mythology is that in the late 1800s there was a hot springs in maine and i had to do research because there are very few hot springs in maine and i had to at least find one to make this realistic and i found one um although i had to change the location it's not it's not in the same location but um the mythology of the the series is that these two uh, two people swam in the hot springs fell in love and so it's not a paranormal series at all it's more that the man um decided to turn the town into a place for people to find love and you have all of these single lumberjacks in the backwoods of maine mm -hmm. and city women started coming in and it and over time now 100 plus years later the town really is this tourist place and so they have these codes and so the police department drive they all drive pink cars and the police officers wear red uniforms with black shoes and black belts and so describing these things and coming up with the ideas like well what would they do so in the 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 next book that's coming out love you more um this is a little spoiler there are entire chapters devoted to the heroine serving on the love committee and if you've ever lived in a small town or even in a large city and you've been on the PTA or the board of your church or a nonprofit board, you know what those meetings can be like, the minutia. And you get to a point sometimes where you're like, can we please just make a decision or can we please just move on from this? Or it goes into the absurd, right? So it, imagine that town vibes. Yes. Yeah, so, so it's, uh, you know, what I do with the, the love committee is I take it above and beyond. So they get into these arguments about the particular shade of pink that's allowed on a sign. And, and again, if you like, I know in, in a town I've lived in, the um, zoning board got cracked down on small business owners for the specifics of their store signs. Um, and it can be both important but it can also get absurd and so um but the town decided that the police officers dress this way and so all of the other towns police officers make fun of love you means um cops but um they had to draw the line i actually did this is part of the research for the book i i i wanted the lights to be red and white only or pink and red on the police cars and I found that that is absolutely not permitted at all. Um, so for, for, and I don't remember the code, but for some, or some law or rule, you have to have the blue and red um, lights that we, that are standard in the United States. And so it's the one concession that the love committee had to, to give. Um, but I do in, in Love You Again, the second book in the series, the hero is, is Luke, a local police officer. And he's constantly, he gets teased by his siblings for looking like a red Twizzler. Um, so, but that was, that, that was fun. Or, or there's, a, there's a scene where his daughter, who is six in the book, um, is given a muffin by someone who's not from the town. And she looks at it. She's like, what, what is this? Because in Love You, every baked good is heart-shaped. And so the children, when they encounter a round cookie, they're like, what, what, what is this? So it's just that kind of silly thing, but it's fun and it it adds to that that sense of being there, of really being in there, there and immersing yourself in in the story. I love it. So Love You More is coming out what date now? November 10th. November 10th. So we don't have to wait too long, thankfully. Um, so you guys can pre-order that right now. I have it pulled up down below so that it will be on your Kindle on midnight at the day it's released on November 10th. So I'm so excited for that one. I mean, I have inhaled all your books. I read the first one um, on my Kindle, Love You Wrong. And then I read Love You Again and Love You Right. And I'm so excited for Love You More. Um, Girl Who Paints says I'm counting down. Me too. Me too. <laughs> um, so tell me more about Love You Now. What is that one? Okay. Oh, so love you now. So love you now. There. So in the series, there are four siblings, the love you siblings, and their name is spelled L-U-V-I-E-W. But the town is called Love You, Maine. Um, so they totally took this and commercialized it 100 years ago. 
And so there are four siblings and the first book, so Love You Wrong is a prequel to the, really to the series and it's available free for download on, on Amazon. But um, it's, so book one is Love You Right and that's Kel. So there are four siblings. There's Kellen, Kel, um, Luke, Colleen and Dennis. And so Kel has had his book, Luke has had his book, Colleen is Love You More, I'm writing that right now. And it's a wonderful best friend sister book um, where she falls in love with Luke's best friend. And it turns out he's been in love with her right back, of course. And Love You Now is Dennis. And we have not met Dennis. And you get a very small hint of Dennis in book three so the book that comes out on november 10th but a, a real hint he's the, the the one who got away the the kid who left town and he's you know he this is a a towny family these are the the stalwarts of the town and so f when he was 18 he enlisted and he left and he's been in the army and of course he's in the special forces um and you don't really know much about him but um his story is really interesting and I don't want to spoil it too much um, but it starts with a one night stand and goes from there and he is comes home after serving he's closed off he's quiet no one quite understands this is someone who um, he, he gets out after 20 years 22 years and doesn't really want to talk about what's going on and of course it's the love of the right person that helps him to crack open. Okay. Um, is this one and, coming? <laughs> so that's January 3rd. And <gasps> oh, that you are is, rapid releasing these. Well, I'm trying. What? Um they they were they are set as apart three months apart. Um and then I did have to move the pre-order for Love You More, unfortunately, because of some some life issues. And it's the first time I've had to move a pre-order in six years, so that was a bit hard. Really? But um but it's it's been it's so much fun digging into these deeper issues because he's a veteran and my father was a veteran. My father came back from Vietnam different. And so having being able to touch on those topics, but doing it in a world where uh, full of support and full of love and full of um, people being able to really think about who they are and reflect within um, yeah. within a dynamic community is part of the, the, it's part of the intrigue, like the internal intrigue I have as a writer when I'm writing. Um, and also the, there are some very comedic scenes set up. I wanna be careful because there's a big spoiler for this one. Um, and I have, I'm still, I just wanna be careful with that. I, I, I don't, I don't wanna be a tease, I, I, mm. but, but Dennis's book is, um different from the other three but similar i mean it's all set and love you um so uh you get the same fun you get to see different parts of the of the town that haven't been introduced yet and that's part of what's so fun about writing a small town world is that you get to come back to the same characters but in different scenarios like different festivals different stores mm -hmm. different um all kinds of different things that that make that make it, um, sorry. No, that's that make it. That I love all the Easter eggs in the other books of the previous characters. That's my favorite. I know we talked about writing Easter eggs in each other's books for our towns because our towns yes. are fictitious towns, of course, but they are close. My town is nor or central eastern New Hampshire. Yours is western Maine. They might as well be like yes. neighbors. <laughs> well, so if, 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 if for, for, people watching, if you know where Freiburg, Maine is, mine is set around that general area. What's it called? Freiburg, F-R-Y-E-B-U-R-G. And so yours is set, I think, due west in um, New Hampshire, if my geography is remotely close. Mine's, or are you further north? Mine's North Conway. Okay, so they're like 45 minutes from each other, something That's, like that. This is helpful. That is for hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So, so they'll have to cross over and they're definitely going to cross over. I think yeah. they have some romantic weekends in Love You Mean. 
Um, we're cause well, and, and my characters all shop in North Conway because that's where all the outlet malls are. <laughs> that's where all the outlet malls are. So um, mine is, I went there um, five years ago with my aunt and we stayed oh. in, and I just love New Hampshire. We went, took the whole King Gamayas Highway across and it was peak season. Oh. It was like a year ago, five years ago this week. So it was peak and it was so beautiful. So it's and, beautiful. Yeah. And we stayed at this inn and I was like, this is, I don't know. I just, I, I stories always, I always thought everyone did that. Apparently not, <laughs> but I always made up all these worlds in my head. You know, when you're a little kid and you play like house and like, yes. always think up stories and think up, you know, what your people are doing. I think my favorite toy as a kid was like little people. I'm going to fish your face little people. <laughs> you can move them around. Yeah. yeah. You can move them around. You can make them do things and make up stories. And that was my favorite. Those were my favorite toys for so many years. I love making up worlds and places and things. And my sister would say, that person's name is this. And I was like, no, it's not. It's this. And then I would like tell this whole story about him. And she's like, what is wrong with you? It's a little person. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a whole backstory it's to a this whole backstory. Person. And she's like, I, okay. <laughs> so I've always done you that. You were a writer. Yeah. From a little. Yeah. I writer. had a high school English teacher tell me, well, it's a good thing you're never going to be a writer because your grammar stinks. And I really believed that for a long time. I was like, well, I can't be a writer because my grammar stinks. And uh... then one day I was thinking about it and I thought, I don't really have to be good at grammar to be a writer because that's what editors are for and (laughs) my job is to make the world and the people and make it somewhat make sense and then it can be edited like crazy and and I thought well let me just try and that's when I met Jess we both have a friend named Jess who edits and she said oh yeah I'll do a development edit for you and that whatever I sent her and the book you read are not the (laughs) not the same thing right not the same it went through massive massive edits and um but yeah shame girl who paints said shame on that teacher yeah it's really important to speak less kids because even if i i I really am bad at grammar ask jess i mean she'll tell you this she's like wow okay we're gonna work on this (laughs) and i've learned a lot but i do think it's fun to make worlds and people and visions and your book was fun for me because it was such a stressful time when I was reading those books and I would literally look forward to sneaking away and getting just reading just a little more and my my world at the time was pure chaos over here at that time so I needed that escape that great escape into love you Maine and I would just I binge read these and just love these so much. I actually bought the second one quick oh. and then you sent it and I thought you sent the third and I was like oh, and then I opened oh. the second <laughs> and I'm like that's okay. I have two now. I'm gonna do a giveaway. Oh, but so I um I just like escaped into this world. So I'm so glad all of you watching this right now can get started and not have to wait too long. For the next two, because by January you'll have, well, are there going to be more or is that? there? So that's a great question. Yeah. There will be more. So okay. when I, when I develop this world, this is part of planning it out in advance versus writing a book and seeing what happens next. Um, there are going to be spin-off series within the world. So, so the love yous are for, there's four siblings. So there are, I have plans for um, the Love You Billionaires. I have plans for um, the I wondered local, about them. Well, the local baseball team is called the Cupids. And so I have a baseball series that's coming. And then there's a mm. handyman uh, company called Love You Handy Jobs. And local teenagers keep stealing the Y off the sign. <clears throat> and so that group of six brothers and cousins are all going to get their own series. And I so that was part of feel this, Julia. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's a, welcome to my books. Uh, but that was part. So part of the design was how do I build a world, but I can have like all these different types of people in there. And so, yeah, there's plenty more coming um, the, for the love you, this particular love you family. 
um, Dennis's book will be the last, but there's there's plenty more coming. And so that world, and so the side characters that you meet, like you meet Reef, who runs Love You Coffee, and yes, you know, you can kind of see that's one of the fun things about writing these larger worlds is that readers can start to have their favorite side characters and they can start to say well when does so and so get a book when does so and so get a book and and so when i was envisioning the world i was thinking okay what kind of character do i want to make sure that i have in here who deserves a book because not all not all secondary characters do but um but it's so after Dennis's book, there's definitely more coming. Oh, that's so excited. Thank you for watching, Wendy. Wendy said, I just picked up Love You Wrong. Excited to read it. Uh, Thank you. This is just so exciting. What are you currently reading right now? So I am, well, I, I finished your book. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I just, I, I emailed Aaron. <clears throat> <laughs> So I emailed Erin earlier and just told her that, I, and I, no, no spoilers, but I just loved the way that she handled certain parts of the book and it, it's a world that you can crawl into. So I, I was reading that. Um, I'm actually reading when, I'm, and I'm, I want, I'm terrible with titles, uh, When Gracie Met the Grump by Mariana yes, Zasta. That was and great. Wow, wow, I knew it was different. Um, it's amazing and it's so much, it's her, still her voice, still her style, but it goes in uh, into a whole different layer that I hadn't expected with her. So, um, so I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and then I read a lot of, um, well, I read I read fellow authors' books, but then I will stop. And I, when I'm writing, I tend to stop. But um, Pippa Grant's Irresistible Trouble, and Megan Quinn's newest. Again, titles, I'm terrible. Royal, royally, royally thank you. Um, and so, but I'm really reading a lot of nonfiction right now. And this is me being geeky. I'm reading a lot of nonfiction around neuroscience because um, I'm fascinated by a lot of the advances and especially neuroscience related to reading and empathy and how we develop more empathy core portions of our brain when we read fiction. So that's, I don't have a specific title, but um, really? I'm reading a cluster of stuff right now. But but no, Mariana Zapata, I'm, I'm in the middle of it right now. Like I'm going to end up binge reading it all day, the rest of it all day today after this. Um, so, so that's what I'm reading currently. Well, um, I have to ask you, what did you love about Lucy Scores, Things We Never Got Over? Did you read that or is that on your TBR? Oh no, I read it. I, I'm always impressed by people who can write killer opening chapters. Was like, that not the best? Just like, bam, 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 bam. And the whole mistaken identity concept and, and being mistaken for someone so bad. Who's done <laughs> so many people so wrong. I was like, and so as a, as a reader, I was completely hooked. But as a writer, I was also like, Wow, I have to watch what you know, she does I with it. that book on every format and I even sent it to my editor. I said, This is how I want to write. This yeah. like coming out swinging, every chapter yes. was tight. They were not long drawn. You write like that too. And I think oh, that's why I you. love your books because you. you write very tight chapters, very everything adds to the story. There's not a lot of like what purpose was that? You know how you read some books and you're like, where did we, I mean, it's pretty, but where are we going? Yours are very like, like a boxer like hers. And I love oh, thank you. the um, pacing that she does. And um, I try to explain that to people. And sometimes people are like, what? And I'm like, no, no, no. It's the humor, the steaminess and this, and the, the fast pacing. And yes. And connecting different threads. Because yes. that's one of the things that I think as, as I've matured as an author, that ability to connect. And that was one thing I saw in your book that I was really impressed for a debut author. You were able to connect back to things that were brought up in chapter the first few chapters and make, make all of the different elements make sense by the end. Um, and, and not just not just technical sense, but emotional sense. 
And Lucy does that so beautifully. It's one thing that's a hallmark of, of so many of her books because you get, you, it, you're not just along for the journey for the story, you're along for the journey for what your own heart does, for what your empathy centers in your brain do to, to affect you and, and to literally have a neurochemical effect on you. This, I'm getting geeky. But, um, and, and so that, that ride of the heart gets to be so much richer when authors do that. And I think that's one thing that, um, what do they call it, Twingo? Things we yep, never got over. Go. And then the sequel, I just, I just pre-ordered the sequel. I did too. Okay. I was like, just take my money. I was like, February, what? February. Oh, I know. I talked to her back in May and she was on the show and I had to really pull it together. I was like, hi, Lucy. <laughs> it's so nice to have you on the show. But I was dying inside. I was dying the whole time going, <gasps> but I was breathing like trying to like I was at a job interview you know when you put on that right. face but inside you're like is Lucy score <laughs> yeah but yeah. and she's so down to earth she's just she's so very sweet and just very genuine she deserves every bit of success she gets because she's just the nicest human and most creative mm. writer too and she's just great um, so I, some, anytime I read or read similar to an author, I always ask them, what do you think about things we never got over? Because everybody always, if they're an author, they get it. The pacing. Yes. It's so good. It's so goals. Yeah. So your books are as well. I always like to ask our authors too. What are you watching right now? Oh, <laughs> well, it's funny that I'm, well, it's funny that I'm reading Mariana Zabata's book because I, we just started watching the boys. And I don't know if you know anything about this. It is, imagine a world, and I'm, we literally just watched the first episode. So we're in, we're taking a break. We're watching Silicon Valley, which is an older series. Um, but we're taking a break from that. And The Boys is, imagine a world where superheroes um, are open and known, and they are literally run by a corporation that contracts them to different cities throughout the world to fight crime. And... I, I don't know if I want to spoil it, but the whole concept of it was so intriguing. And we watched the first episode and we both just, do you ever watch a show where you finish the first episode and you turn to the other people in the room and your jaw is on the floor and you're like, we have to watch the next episode, but it's 1130 at night and you can't. And so now today I'm like, oh, we get to watch You get everything done so you can get in bed and watch it. Yeah, we do that too. Yes. <laughs> And it, I mean, there are, I have a lot of favorites. I, for a long time, I didn't watch television and it, I was just too busy writing and raising kids and running my business. And then probably about five years ago, I realized I needed, I, I needed it I, I, as someone who used to just voraciously consume books and movies and television. Um, so back about five years ago, I started what we watched the Santa Clarita diet and that was kind of the first, oh yeah. A series that we gobbled down and, and like, oh, some of my favorites are The Crown. Um, it's wide ranging. The Expanse. Um, Don't you find it love reading that you're writing though? I, it, I mean, obviously I make completely different books than when I watch, but sometimes something will happen and it'll trigger like a thought and yes. oh, what if I did this in my book? And then they did this and it like spins into this whole thing that doesn't even make sense about what I just watched, but somehow in my head it makes sense. <laughs> Yeah, well, and it's funny because I, I read a book recently, um, and again, I'm terrible with titles, um, the, the, the Night Burns by Ross, and I'm going to blank on his last name, Ross um, starts with a B. See, this is, I'm terrible, and it's so funny because readers will do this too. I'll go to, to a conference, and I'll ask them what they're reading. They're like, the, oh, I don't know her name or the title, but there's a, there's a pink shoe on the cover, and that's me too. Um, but at any rate, I read this book by him, um, and it involves a 12 year old who it's not romance, um, at all. It's a thriller, um, who is being raised in a cult and doesn't realize it. And it made me want to explore that as a concept. And so totally different perspective, um, and not, not in a romantic comedy, but it was more like that. Ooh, I, that would be really interesting to do. Um, or we've watched uh, uh, Sex Education, which mm -hmm. is a phenomenal show. I'm desperate for the next series, uh, the next season, and it really gave me some insight into kid, 
kids my kids ages and to be able to go to them and say okay well then how do how does your generation i hate saying it that way because it makes me feel old but how does your generation talk about sex how does your generation talk about this situation how would you you know how would a, an 18 year old approach telling someone you're attracted to them and and we it, you know not in a creepy over the top crossing lines with my kids kind of mode and they're used to me asking some really strange questions and they're like, this is going in a book, isn't it mom? But it, <laughs> but it gives me that opportunity when I watch widely and read widely to, to not, to, to not to imitate. Cause I don't like to do that. I, I generally okay. don't read other rom-com authors when I'm writing, but, but the, the richness of other, other creators worlds, can be really inspiring. Yeah, for sure. I loved your city or your town. I cannot wait to read more. The fact that you have way more coming just made my day. I know everybody watching that's commenting, they're like, and this is why I love you. <laughs> and yes, um, so this is so exciting that you have more to read because I am an auto buy for you now. Um, oh, thank you. Um, coming home to me. And, and I'm an auto buy for Aww. you too. Well, that is high really praise coming from one of my favorite authors because this was my first book and I felt like I could tell where I was lacking in some places and I've been given so much grace for those things. <laughs> and I'm like, I promise it gets better with the second book. I promise the third one's doing better. <laughs> yeah. But if I can say this, I think for debut authors, like I've gone back and looked at some of my older stuff. And of course, would I love with the the knowledge and the experience I have now to go back and rewrite or to change? Sure. But there's also a, a joy, uh, an innovation, an excitement that comes out when you're, when you're getting started. And it's not that it dampens or, or, or goes away the longer you write, but it's, it's unique. It's, it's kind of like looking back at a picture of yourself in eighth grade and going, Oh man, I wish I didn't have all that acne. And I wish those braces weren't there. Well, they were because it's who you were yep. when you were that at that point. And so I think, um, I think, I think for any new author or struggling author, um, I think that, that, that would be my input that just enjoy what you are doing because you're doing it with such enthusiasm. Oh, well, it is such, like you said, it is the best job. It is it so is great to, um, just, just be able to do what we love and make up things and yes. see it come together and actually look at it sitting there in a whole book and think that's wild that I literally daydream that up and there it sits. And people, people will, ta somebody tagged me in a picture in Japan yesterday reading my book and I was, this is why yeah, that's exciting. <laughs> so yeah. Well, and knowing that when, when I write, I imagine the reader reacting to what I'm writing. Like I literally, you, you were talking about how it's cinematic. It's cinematic in my head, but it's also as if the audience is there too. And I'm like, what, what can I do to, to really get them to feel? What can I do to give them the experience that they're looking for? Um, at the same time that I'm giving myself the experience that, um, that just bubbles up creatively. So, so knowing that we're touching readers and giving them that, is, whether they're looking for an escape or they're looking to feel good, just knowing that um, that they're eager eager to use their own imaginations and get lost in there is 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 wonderful. It's it's a true gift, a true gift. Well, um, where can we find you and support you online? Ah, so I have a website. It is jkentauthor.com. It's that simple. Um, my books are available on all the major retailers, and this uh, my, this series is narrated by in audiobook by the wonderful Aaron Mallon and Teddy Hamilton. Aaron. And so, and you can get them in print on Amazon and, and other retailers as well. So, um, go to my website jkenauthor.com to find all of the various links, and um, and mostly if I'm on Facebook because um, I'm old. Um, but <laughs> well, I just made a TikTok about you today, so maybe you should go watch it. <laughs> I need, yes, happily, I need to go and be on TikTok. I'm, I'm, I'm old I'm and getting I'm there. tried to figure out TikTok. It is hard. It is really hard. Speaking of real quick, I forgot my next, qu my previous question. Um, what advice would you have for an aspiring author? Ah, so my advice would, well, some of it's the standard advice, 
read widely, but don't imitate specifically. Um, make sure you understand the narrative arc for the type of writing you're doing. So if you're doing sci-fi, understand the hero or the heroine's journey. If you're doing romance, understand the beats. Um, so if you want to be a genre fiction writer, make sure that you understand what readers expect. And then uh, personally, and then write from your heart. Write the story. Worry about the grammar later. Worry about um, the branding later. If you're brand new and, this, and your goal is to write your first book, then then study, but then finally just create um, and create within the framework that your genre expects. And if you do that, and if you write joyfully, I think you're going to be fine. That's great advice. Well, everybody be sure to follow Julia here on Amazon as well, so you don't miss out on any of her upcoming releases. It sounds like you are jam-packed in 2023 and have a lot of good stuff coming for us. So I'm really excited for that. And thank you so much for joining me today. This was so much fun. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And, and it just, it, I, this is great. This so is much. just great. I'm, I'm losing words. You have to come <laughs> back in January and we'll talk about the new one. Happily. happily. <laughs> thank you so awesome. much, Amy. We'll stand by one moment. Thank you for watching, everyone. Be sure to hit that follow button and tune in for more Author Lives every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 a.m. Central. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.